and uh, Dr. Cho. So say, for example, you have a 14-year-old, let's say 12-year-old female who was referred to your clinic for a scoliosis concern. They were just screamed at the school gym and told they possibly have scoliosis and they were sent to your clinic. You're giving no other uh, information or any other details. Uh, what are some of the things that you would kind of start to ask this family or this patient? Like, what are some of the things on history and physical exam that's important to realize? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, when the patient comes to you, the first thing that you should do, and I got this from my mentor in San Diego, Dr. Dennis Wenger, first thing you should do is you should read their t-shirt. Um, so with any patient, uh, when you walk into that room, you have to be able to um, establish trust pretty quickly. And so if a 12 year old girl's coming to me with a problem like scoliosis, it sounds like this big bad problem. They're, they're terrified, they're anxious, and you really have to figure out a way to connect to them. Um, so uh, read their t-shirt, you know, if they're wearing a t-shirt or, you know, try to talk to them, what are they interested in? You know, what do they want to be when they grow up? I, I think that's really, really important. So when a kid comes in, you know, if, a, if like a eight year old boy comes in, I say, Hey, do you like playing Roblox or Minecraft? Cause almost all of them do. If that kid is a little bit older and a boy, it might be mine. It might be, um, uh, Fortnite. Uh, for girls, uh, you know, I, I ask them, you know, what they're into. Some of them are into music. I, I love music, so we, we talk about that. But it's really important in that first 30 seconds to a minute to figure out what they like to do and then have them just talk about it. And then what that does is it lowers their defenses and it gets them to trust you. Um, so first thing to do, make them trust you. Um, the second thing... Yeah, I, I think it's really important. I, I think it's one of those things like, you know, especially when you become an attending, you, you, you get slotted into like these 15 minute or 10 minute time slots to see a patient. And really, it's not enough time. But in that short amount of time, you can make it really effective if you can get them to trust you. And so I, I recommend spending that first minute or so just talking about whatever, you know, whatever the kids are into. So. Yeah, and I, that was something that one of my pediatric attendees always told me. And even in a setting like this, or if it's a traumatic injury or something like that, and the kid is in pain, I mean, you have a short period of time to, you know, get on that kid's good side, or you lose them. And and sometimes you, it's no coming back. Sometimes they just they're done trying to trust you if you do the wrong thing or don't really get on their team relatively early. So I think that's a great tip. Yeah, for sure. And it, I mean, even for adults, too, I, I think it's just really, really important for, you know, anyone to to do to do that so that they you can establish a relationship. Uh, I mean, it, it's for any field as a doctor. The number one thing is they have to trust you. Um, Absolutely. And so for everybody yeah. who's listening, the, the, we're, we're spending a lot of time on that, but it is very key. And like you say, any relationship, doctor, doctor, patient relationship is, is really, really major, I think. For sure. And so this 12 year old kids come into me to my office, they have, um, you know, what a pediatrician saw as scoliosis and the way they saw it is exactly what we, we see on the screen here, which is where um, patients uh, will bend over and they see a prominence usually on the right side of the thorax. And the prominence is because of a rotation that happens secondary to the uh, deformity. Um, and uh, if you have an iPhone, there's an app that is on every iPhone, unless you're unless you're rocking like iPhone one from like 2006. <laughs> Maybe um, so. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. That's why I had to I had to put that out there. So um, if you have the iPhone, if you just look for the app called Measure, it is um, one of the apps that comes on every iPhone. And if you uh, look at Measure and then you just swipe over to the right, it'll actually give you an inclinometer. And I use that, that's what I use to put on a kid's back to see you know, how much rotation a kid has. If that number is greater than five degrees, then it's worth it for um, a specialist like me to look at it or to get x-rays, um, just to make sure. Uh, a friend of mine, Kais Naziri from Brooklyn, he, um, he actually wrote a paper on this, uh, basically showing that the um, iPhone scoliometer is just as good as an analog scoliometer within one degree, which proves to me two things. Number one, the scoliometer is really good. And number two, that uh, you can write a paper on anything in orthopedics. Yeah, just uh, have some decent data. And next thing you know, boom, it's out there. Exactly, exactly. And so that, it's the first thing, that's why the patient got sent to you. So what you yeah. want to know is, is this kid growing or is this kid not growing? 
That's the most important thing. If a kid is growing, um, then uh, you're going to be more worried about the curve getting worse than if the kid is done growing. Um, so that, that's really the critical thing. And so then we have to look at what things can we ask them or look on exam or x-ray um, to see whether or not they're growing and how much growth do they have remaining. So the classic thing for the history is to say, have you had your menstrual periods yet? Mm -hmm. And the reason that's important is because the menstrual periods correspond to uh, just around the period of maximal growth in girls. Um, and why do I keep bringing up girls? Because Scoliosis tends to happen much more often in girls than in boys, especially in curves that are progressive, that uh, require surgical or, or management. Um, and so that, that's really the critical thing. So make them trust you, you know, uh, how to, you know, do they have rotation in their back and then how much growth do they have remaining? And then uh, on the physical exam, you want to look at all the other things. Uh, are their heads about directly above their pel pelvis? Do they have any shoulder asymmetry? Do they have any waist asymmetry because of the curve? Um, and so those are all things that you want to notice on your physical exam uh, to make sure to see, is this a real scoliosis? The other thing too is um, uh, sometimes kids can have a limb-like discrepancy. So when you have them bend over, you want to look at what happens to the pelvis. If it looks like one side of the pelvis is higher than the other when they bend over, then perhaps the patient doesn't have a true scoliosis. Maybe it's a false scoliosis because the patient has a limb-like discrepancy. So all those things you can notice just from having them bend over, uh, just from looking at their back. Now, what, one thing that I noticed that you did not say is that they come in with complaints of back pain. Do, do these kids normally have pain even, even though, you know, mom find out that baby girl has, you know, this, I don't know, let's say 20 to, uh, yeah, let's say 20 degree uh, curve is, is, do they have to worry about back pain coming more so than anyone else? Yeah, so back pain with scoliosis is not the usual presenting problem. Um, so if someone comes into uh, the office saying they have scoliosis and they have back pain, um, I, I make them I, I make them tell me what type of back pain it is, and I, I call it the palm sign. Um, if someone, if I say, "Hey, where is your pain?" and they use their palm and they kind of wave it around the entire back, to me that I'm not worried about that whatsoever. If they're just waving their palm around like their entire back, it's usually, you know, kind of muscular in nature, uh, can be improved with physical therapy or conditioning. Um, and it's not usually a structural problem that needs to be fixed. But if they use what I call the finger sign, if you ask them where does it hurt, and if they point with one finger to a particular spot and say it hurts here, it always hurts here when it happens, um, you know, that's when I get a little bit more concerned. So um, I think those are critical things to ask um, during your physical exam. Okay. And while we're just kind of mentioning, you know, concerning things to look out for when evaluating someone with uh, scoliosis, are, are there certain things that you're looking for that may key you in that this may be, uh, you know, their scoliosis, scoliosis may be due to some kind of secondary, uh, secondary cause? Yeah, so the, so the number one thing um, when you see a kid with scoliosis, usually it's a right-sided scoliosis, meaning that the curve goes to the right side of the chest, and then you see kind of a prominence on that side as well. If the curve goes the other way, if the curve goes to the left side, that's really concerning for a neurologic abnormality. Um, so that, that's number one. If you see a left-sided, left thoracic curve, be really, really on the lookout. Is this truly regular scoliosis or is there something else going on? Does this patient have a syrinx? Does this patient have an Arnold Chiari malformation or a tethered cord? Does the patient have a tumor? I remember I saw this kid with a left-sided scoliosis, sent, in, sent the kid for an MRI, and the kid had the biggest spinal cord tumor I'd ever seen in my life. Um, it extended, I, I think it was 15 levels. Um, Dang. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't believe the kid was walking. Um, so it, it's really important. If you have a left-sided curve, um, be really concerned for intraspinal anomaly. 
And then also look at the skin. If you see any hairy patches on the skin, it's probably not your garden variety adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Um, it could be something else like a congenital scoliosis or spina bifida. Um, if you see any discolorations on the skin, any types of cafe au lait spots, um, you know, uh, cafe au lait spots, especially if they're numerous, that, that usually means something like neurofibromatosis type one. Um, sometimes if the cafe au lait spots are bigger and uh, kind of jumbled together, it could be something like a McCune Albright syndrome. Um, on the tests, and I'm guilty of this sometimes because I help to write questions for the OITE and the ABO, ABOS. Um, I, I don't know the difference between the coast of California and the coast of Maine. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know what, the, what is different about them, but basically small spots and a lot of them, that's neurofibromatosis, larger spots and less of them. Then I'm thinking of something like McCune Albright syndrome. Um, and then also, you know, you got to look to see, are there any foot deformities? Are there asymmetric abdominal reflexes? All those things would point to something that maybe is not your garden variety adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Absolutely. Okay. And once we get past this point, um, heading towards the next